Many times in the history of our civilization, the introduction of a new thought has brought skepticism, even ridicule. Despite this, there always has remained the duty and an alienable right to tell the people the truth. The motion picture you are about to see is true. It is not fiction. Much of the information in it has never been told. You will see it here for the first time. On July 29, 1952, at the Pentagon, a press conference was held. This is the actual official transcript of that conference. Among those participating were Major General Roger M. Ramey, Director of Operations, USAF, Colonel Donald L. Bauer, Technical Analysis Division, Air Technical Intelligence Center, and Captain Edward J. Ruppelt, Aerial Phenomenon Branch, Air Technical Intelligence Center. This is Major General John A. Samford, Director of Intelligence, United States Air Force, who conducted the conference. Why was the conference held? It all began with an incident which occurred in 1947. On the afternoon of June 24th of that year, Kenneth Arnold made the first report on flying saucers. On this day, Arnold took off from Chehalis, Washington, and flew toward the Rainier Plateau at an elevation between 9 and 10,000 feet. Over Mineral, Washington, he observed a formation of very bright objects to the north. He radioed ahead that they appeared to be close to the mountaintops and traveling at tremendous speed. When Arnold came in for a landing at Pendleton, airport personnel and the local press were waiting for him. Arnold counted nine objects in echelon formation. He observed that they had no tails and described them as saucer-shaped objects. The story was picked up by the wire services. He saw what? In the next 24 hours, virtually every newspaper in the country ran the story. report precipitated an avalanche of sightings from cities, towns, villages, from every section of the country. The commercial aspects of the saucer situation were not overlooked. Alert businessmen and manufacturers came up with all sorts of oddities the practical joker moved in. Homemade saucers of all kinds and descriptions began to turn up promiscuously. Within a few months of the original saucer report, practically everyone in America was conscious of flying saucers. This man in the saucer, can you describe him? Well, sir, he was small and skinny. He had a, his head was pointed, came to a very sharp point. He had long green hair. His eyes were a sort of purplish red. He had large ears which were formed like an antenna. His teeth were perfect, but uh, spread far apart. And I noticed, too, a jacket of uh, some sort of spun glass and bright red metallic hues. You say this all took place in a few seconds. Mr. Nagelschmidt, can you tell me what color tie I'm wearing? I'm sorry, sir. I didn't notice. You mean to say you can remember everything about this man from the spaceship, his hair, the color of his eyes, the clothing he was wearing, and yet, after all this time, you can't tell me the color of my tie? But you didn't come out of a flying saucer. Then, at approximately 1400 on January 7th, 1948, the Kentucky State Police reported to the Fort Knox Military Police that they had sighted an unusual aircraft or object flying through the air, circular in appearance, approximately 200 to 300 feet in diameter, moving westward. A Provo Marshal at Fort Knox called the commanding officer at Godman Air Force Base. How 
all flight service at Wright Field to determine if they have any experimental aircraft in our area. We have a report of an unidentified aircraft south of the field. It was about 1315 when the tower controller in the Godman Tower received his instructions from the commanding officer. Right, Patterson. The PFC continued giving routine instructions to a light plane which was practicing takeoffs and landings. Flight service. Captain Hopper, flight service. Flight service is a clearinghouse. The positions of all military planes are carefully plotted so a minute-to-minute -minute check may be made on their position, course, altitude, and speed. Flight service to Godman Tower. We have no experimental aircraft in that area. However, we do have a B-29 and an A-26 on photo mission in that area. In the meantime, Lieutenant Cowan, the AACS, and the operations officer had arrived in the tower. They were joined by the intelligence officer and the executive officer. Upon hearing the information from flight service, the executive officer called Colonel Hicks, the commanding officer. Colonel Hicks. Colonel Hicks, can you come over to the field, please? At about 1350, the tower controller saw an object south of Godman Field and directed it to the attention of the tower. Lieutenant Cowan was the first of the group, after the tower controller, to locate it. He immediately directed it to the attention of the operations officer. After observing it for a moment, he picked up a telephone and put in a second call to the commanding officer. While he was putting the call through, Colonel Hicks arrived in the tower. It was now about 1420. 